It has been a little while. Last week's video, I was working with a company and a product. The, the company sold out, not mad at all, uh, but basically they were like, hey, can we move this video up a month? And it was such a key part of my video. I was like, all right, I gotta start completely over from scratch. I just got so demotivated, I was like, I'm not gonna make a video. Before I start this video tomorrow, or really today, if you're watching this on Saturday, uh, I am launching two long sleeves, a white and a black variant on thefuelforce.com. First link in the description down below. I am, wait, hold on. Okay. This is the uh, the black one. It's like got the glitch grip thing going on the front. And then I have a white one that has a small logo and a huge logo on the back. You guys have been asking for these over and over again. Ignore all the red shit on it from the hoodie. It's fucking cold. Let's jump into this. Joe. What's going on, man? Good to see you. 2018 Macan base. And when I say base, I mean base. This thing has one option on it, and it is lane changing assist for $700. This thing comes in right at $49,550, so right under $50,000 you can buy this Macan. And you're probably like, Joe, why are you driving the most base Macan I've ever seen? The question I kinda wanna answer with this video is, is the base, is the most entry level Porsche you can buy still a Porsche? When you buy an entry level Ford, you're buying a, a Ford. It's gotta live up to the name of Ford. When you're buying an entry level Mercedes, it's gotta live up to the Mercedes name, something that I don't think they do. Does a $50,000 compact SUV from Porsche live up to the Porsche nameplate on the back? That's what I'm trying to answer here. So what does $50,000 get you from the Porsche family? Well. Not a whole lot in terms of power. 252 horsepower, four liter uh, single turbo motor, a shitload of turbo lag, and not a whole lot of torque. However, it's a compact SUV, and you kind of have to remember that when you're driving it, that you're not driving a 911. This is not meant uh, to be a true sports car. It, it's supposed to be an everyday vehicle for someone that probably isn't even really that into cars. I don't think uh, most car enthusiasts are going to buy a base Macan. This thing competes with the Evoque, the Velar, the F-Pace, the X3, and in my opinion, I've driven all of those, and this is night and day better. You are getting so much more car in this than anything else, and it's so hard to explain why. It's like, it's like trying to explain to an Android user why you like using your iPhone. It's one of these things where it's, it's, it's just better. And they're always like, well, what do you mean it's better? It's not better. And it's like, no, 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 it, it's just better. So maybe I don't get the same leather from the 911 on the dash and stuff. Maybe some things are stripped out. But in general, if you look at the interior of this and you look at the interior of a $100,000 911, they're very similar. Even the seats I'm sitting in are leather and Alcantara. They're very similar to what comes in the $100,000 Cayenne. Is that a slight against the Cayenne or is it a bonus for the Macan? I would say it's a bonus for the Macan. I'm not saying these are cheap seats that are put in an overpriced car. I'm saying these are very nice seats that are put in a very underpriced car. Here's another fun fact, PDK, in an entry level $50,000 Porsche. It's even got the paddles to go with it. The transmission in this thing is a true dual clutch. Do you want a dual clutch in a 252 horsepower car? I don't know. I didn't expect like lightning fast shifts and basically the same transmission from a 911 in the cheapest Porsche that they make. And I guess that's why Porsche is Porsche and everyone else is, it isn't. So in sport mode, <laughs> foot down. I'm not, I'm not really going anywhere. I'm not saying it's, it's not, slow okay like you're not gonna get in this thing and it feels like a minivan putting your foot down to pass an 18 wheeler in front of you it takes a little bit there's some times where on a two-lane road i don't know how comfortable i would be uh, making like a tight pass because i don't know how quickly i could get in front of the person in front of me as soon as i put my foot down this thing knows exactly what i want to do it drops three gears and i'm going it's just i'm not going anywhere very quickly and the turbo lag i hate to say anything negative about porsche but the turbo lag is pretty bad. The screen is always within reach. Uh, the controls on the steering wheel are super easy to use. As one of the best iterations of Apple CarPlay I've ever seen, standard, all of your AC and climate controls is, is right where you want it. And I think I spend so much time in Porsche, I've just gotten used to this layout. But I've noticed now that when I'm driving non-Porsches, I kind of get frustrated with where things are placed. Even in my Raptor, I don't like that the AC is in front of the shifter and kind of under it, it's hard to get to. I don't like that the screen sits up so high that you kind of have to, I don't know. Porsches kind of hit the nail on the head when it comes to like building a cockpit for the driver. It's kind of becoming the norm now that these car companies don't want to specialize in one thing, they kind of want to cover the spectrum. Now, as I said in the beginning, the problem is once you start kind of broadening your scope, BMW's done it, Mercedes has done it, I think you lose a little bit of the prestige of your name. Uh, point in case, Mercedes. If you drive a GLA, I am convinced that the entry level Mercedes are not really Mercedes. They are something more similar to a Ford with a Mercedes badge on it. Fit and finish is kind of shit. The interior quality is kind of shit. Uh, the infotainment center is not great. You're definitely not getting a PDK or anything even close to this transmission. The engine, while I'm not crazy about this, is worse than this. Whether you buy a $50,000 Macan or a $350,000 GT2 RS, you buy a Porsche, you can expect it to be a Porsche. And that's not something that I think holds true uh, with Mercedes and BMW and Audi. And that kind of answers the question right off the bat here of, of is the entry level 
Porsche still a Porsche? Yeah, for sure. Now what happens when you take this quite frankly amazing car and add, oh, I don't know, 150 horsepower and two cylinders? Let's find out. Enter the Macan Turbo. There's a couple different variants of the Macan. You have the Macan Base, you have the Macan S, you have a GTS, and you have a Turbo. The Turbo is the top of the line. They haven't yet released a Turbo S. I don't know if they ever will. What do you get with the Turbo? You don't get with the base car. Well, for starters, two extra cylinders, one extra turbo, 150 horsepower, 150 torque. And the most harsh aspect of it is about $40,000 in price. This car's base price is $77,000, and the particular car I'm driving right now with all the options is $91,570. That is $41,000 more than the car I was just driving. But is this double the car? Yes and no. Now you do get a nicer interior. It feels a little bit nicer. It looks a little bit nicer. The entire dash is wrapped in leather. There's deviated stitching here and there. You have this black trim all the way around. I'm actually a huge fan of this color combo. It looks really classy. Also, the PDK starts making <laughs> a lot more sense in this model. This thing fucking moves. Like, if you're in the market for a sports car, but you want the storage space, you want to sit up a little bit higher, you want the all-wheel drive system, and you really want some power, this thing makes a whole lot of sense, and it's starting to make more sense the more I drive it. I'm not in the market for one of these, but I am having a lot more fun driving this than I do my Raptor. I need the Raptor. I use the bed a lot more than you would think. I am very excited to turn that thing into like a Baja truck and mod it the fuck out, but Right now, if I didn't already own the Raptor and you asked me if I'd rather daily drive this or daily drive the Raptor, the Cayenne GTS I owned, and don't get me wrong, I love that car, but it never felt like a sports car. I was never driving it in my head thinking like, this isn't an SUV. I always was well aware that I was driving a very heavy SUV. This drives like genuinely like a sports car and it, it's a very weird sensation. Out of all the compact SUVs I've driven, none of them quite have the same response as this. Holy shit. The torque is stupid in second gear. Going into this, I don't think I could have come up with like a use case for this. Uh, driving it, I definitely can. I can definitely see why you would want one of these. Holy shit. Guys, I'm not putting on a show because I'm trying to sell, like I don't, I don't fucking get anything if you guys buy Macans. Like if you're watching this review, let's test the brakes because this asshole just pulled out right in front of me. They work pretty well. Fuck you. To be fair, I was going quite over the speed limit. If you're in the market for an SUV or a compact SUV, I know this isn't really a competitor uh, for a bigger SUV like a Range Rover or something like that, but in my mind it, it is. Unless you really need the big back seat and maybe a third row of seating, I don't know why you'd want to go with something bigger than this, especially if you're into driving. Besides the Urus and the SVR, I think this is the most fun I've had an SUV. It is surprisingly good and by far still a Porsche. So don't worry, if you buy the entry level Porsche, I think you can still tell people you own a Porsche without feeling bad about it. You know those guys that buy like 25 year old Lamborghinis for 50 grand and then go around and tell everybody, I just bought a Lamborghini? You did, but not really. It always bugs me. If you buy this, then you go tell people you own a Porsche, you're fine. This is definitely a Porsche. It's cold. It, it is very cold. Um, so, would I buy the Macan Turbo? Simple answer, no. And you're probably like, what the fuck? You just raved about it for so long. Why would you not buy one? Simple answer, I've driven the Macan GTS. And the GTS, strictly looking at it as the best driver's experience you can buy, the GTS, it doesn't have as much power as the Turbo, but it sits a little bit lower. It's a little bit stiffer. I wish I could have reviewed one. They didn't have one today. Uh, but if they did, I would have preferred that over the turbo. Nothing wrong with this. This is actually a faster car. It's a little bit more comfortable, but the GTS to me, it reminds me of a little bit more raw, like a GT4 or something like that. Either way though, I would pick the Macan over all the other compact sport SUVs. So I'm looking at a Velar, uh, an F-Pace, anything from Ford, Chevy, Nissan, anything like that. You have the budget, this would be my go-to. So with that, I'm going to wrap up this video. I appreciate you guys watching. Smash that subscribe button. 
please go check out Momentum Porsche. Right below the Fuel Force link will be a link to Momentum Porsche as well as my sales guy, Ramsey. You'll recognize him from my GT3 RS video. Um, they are more than happy to hook you guys up with the end of the holidays coming up. I'm sure you can get a hell of a deal on a hell of a car. Um, so don't hesitate to reach out to them. If you're looking for a new car, they can ship across the US. Don't forget to check out the Fuel Force launch, which should be live right now. And uh, I apologize for the, the delay in videos. I'm gonna get back on my shit. The warehouse is starting to come together. Our, our names are actually on the door, which is, uh, Check that out, right? Oh, hey. Wait, you're not gonna help? Did Christian leave? You guys think the video's over, but I now have to climb in the back of my truck, which is at the Porsche dealership. I gotta get rolling shots, so it's, it's 40 degrees, and I gotta get in the back of some kind of car and lean out with a gimbal so I can get shots to make this video not suck. Okay, I gotta figure all this shit out. It gets dark in 30 minutes. Great, this video's gonna kick ass. I still gotta go shoot product shots. What you doing? Were your keys in my truck? This is all going wrong. This is such a good day, and now it's just... So how's, how's the end of your day going? Sit, sit, sit. No, sit, no, sit. You know what, just look cute. Yeah, okay. You know what, you guys seem to like vlogs a little bit more anyway. I think you guys like, like seeing, uh, I guess, the real me. And in a turn of events, I think I'm gonna turn this into a vlog because I left the, the gimbal, the Ronin is in the truck, which is at the Porsche store. I'm at my warehouse where I'm gonna film all the shots of this inside. So at best, I gotta go back to the Porsche store. It's 4.30, daylight savings time kind of fucks everything up, which means it'll be dark in 30 minutes. By the time I get back to Porsche, it'll be dark. So the best I can do for rolling shots is gonna be at night. But I'm gonna make the end of this a making of the video of this. That made no fucking sense. Also, what I touched on earlier about no one fitting behind you, I will uh, I'll give you guys a visual. No, I won't. <laughs> this is why I stopped making YouTube videos. I get so stressed out. If I tried to sit behind myself, Turning radius, 10 out of 10. I did not see that working out for me. Okay, now, I'm cold as fuck. I'm tired. I'm gonna take pictures of all the Fuel Force stuff to put on the website. I have zero marketing material. This is what happens when you get super busy uh, and forget that you planned a launch of your clothing brand until the night before, and then you're like, oh shit. So this week has been nonstop on the development side of it. Um, the development company I'm starting is basically gonna launch, probably by next video, I'll give you guys a link to the website and we're ready to go. I have a team together, we're still looking for like one or two guys, um, but in general, I have a really good team that I like working with right now. I'm gonna open that up and that's gonna be like the next, I guess kind of chapter of my life as well as the, uh, the Instagram and YouTube and stuff. I'll get more into the development side of it as well as the fuel force growing into my tool chests and tools and and kind of set it up the way I want. I have a bumper coming for the Raptor. I have light bars coming for the Raptor. I'm gonna put this thing on 37s. I don't know if I wanna do 20 inch wheels or 18. There's all kinds of content coming. So this is actually the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching. Smash that subscribe button and like it if you liked it. If you decide to buy a Macan, check out Momentum. And uh, I'm gonna go be up for the next 10 hours. Uh, I'll see you guys later this week.